Hey, good morning, FCF. We are, believe it or not, on day five, where we're looking at what the scripture teaches us about uh, waiting on God, because sometimes the blessings that he wants to bring to us, they, they need to be delayed for reasons that probably only he is ever going to understand fully. So we're going to pick up reading with a really familiar portion of scripture today. We usually read it around Christmas time, but um, hopefully it'll still have significance for you at this time of year. Here we go. It's in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Here's the key. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, or Messiah the Lord. And that Lord, you're talking about a term that's used of God only in the Old Testament. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And that part we're familiar with. Let me drop you down to verse 18. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. Verse 19, the key. But Mary, that's his mother, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Now again, the big announcement is today, verse 11, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. She's hearing that her child is going to be the Savior of the world. What does Savior mean to Mary? Well, back in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 23, the angel Gabriel told uh, Joseph and, and Mary what to name the child. It said, you shall call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So Mary knew that the term Savior meant that, that he would somehow save his people from their sins. His people, meaning those that trust in him. But she probably didn't put it all together. She was pondering in her heart. Now, perhaps, perhaps the numerous uh, lamb sacrifices that the Israelites made, perhaps she was connecting all that. If she wasn't connecting it then, she soon would, as, you know, eventually John the Baptist would announce that Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, albeit that would not be until Jesus is a grown man. So she ponders these things in her heart. And I want to show you just one other thing. Uh, so she hears this announcement, what he's going to be, but it's going to be a long time before he is the Savior of the world. We get one more insight into Jesus' life in the chapter, uh, in the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, and it's really interesting. In verse 11, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, verse 41, it says, Every year his parents, meaning Jesus' parents, they went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. Now, what happens here is kind of amusing. You know, kind of understand, Jerusalem would have been packed. There could have been 100,000 people up there in Jerusalem for this feast. Jesus and his family and friends, they all went together in a, in a large mass. You read that later on in the verse. So they, they celebrate the Passover and they go home. They go home only to realize along the way, now mind you, they're traveling in mass so they weren't concerned that Jesus wasn't directly with them. They thought he could have been with some of the other relatives. That's mentioned in the passage later. But they find out he's not there. Uh, in fact, for three days, he's missing. So they turn around and they go back to Jerusalem to find him. And when they find him, he's in the temple and he's questioning the theo theologians of the day. And he's giving them answers that were amazing them. He's 12 years old. So once again, we come across this same line about Mary. So in verse 51, it says, Then, this is after, you know, they find him in the temple, and they say, Son, we've been worried about you, and so forth. And he says, Didn't you know you'd find me in my father's house? He meant the temple of God. Verse 51, Then he went down to, to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. So Mary first gets this announcement that he's going to be the Savior of the world. Then she gets this second jarring experience when he's 12 years old uh, that he's so different, so different than anyone else around him at the time. Each time she ponders in her heart. She won't fully understand what any of it means 
until Jesus is 30 years old and his ministry starts. So she had to had to watch, she had to wait. Um, and for Mary, it was both the greatest blessing and the greatest torment, I guess, that any mother could ever experience ultimately. When, when God fully revealed himself in Jesus, in his crucifixion, and then of course his resurrection, that's when all of this would finally fully make sense to Mary, be the blessing because she too comes under Jesus' saving activity as well as everybody else in the world. So here's an example of somebody that in Mary's case, she waited 30 years, actually 33 years, before the blessing finally came to her in all of its fullness. So once again, I, I have to believe that some of us, maybe God is holding off a blessing for us and he's wanting us to ponder some things in our heart. He's wanting us to consider some things. He's wanting us to learn some things. He's wanting us to wait patiently for some things, but not to give up on the blessing that he has awaiting us. Thank you.